Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update video. I am Martin Arwins, your uh, Inkscape developer for uh, making Inkscape better and faster. Thank you for watching this video and a big shout out to all of my Patreons for your continued support. Um, so let's find out what we did in Inkscape Land th this week. Um, first of all, I want to tell you about a story that happened during the 1.0 release. Um, Inkscape has many hundreds of bugs reported to the issue tracker, and it's very hard to know which of those issues is very, very important. I, it should block the release. Um, developers during the 1.0 release uh, generally fixed issues that they'd caused themselves or uh, ones that they um, were, were struggling with when they use Inkscape themselves. Um, but it wasn't making the release good enough to to, to release. Um, so what we did is we put together a uh, a list of problems which should stop the release from happening. And I did this not by asking developers what their issues were. I asked the, the vectors team, I asked the testing team, and I asked the UX team. And I basically said, look, come back to me and tell me what like the top issues are that you think need to be fixed in order to make the release. Um, and then once we kind of had that priority, we went through them, especially things like crashes, and we fixed them as best as we could. Um, there were two issues that were stonking great ugh, problems that we couldn't fix. Um, we just didn't have the time, we didn't have the resources to do it. Um, the first is is when you do a canvas rotation, um, the resize and rotation ha ha handles uh, don't rotate with you, so they look very strange and very wrong. Um, this is this was just basically a limitation in the way that the handles were done. Uh, Tav Mahong has fixed that. He's redone the way those ha ha handles are, and in the next release of Inkscape, they're going to look really beautiful. Um, the second one was about filters, and this is when you create a, um, a drop shadow, or you create a blur, or you do some other one of these filter effects. The the bounding box that happens around where you um, you know you want to paint the the effect is a fixed amount. It's in fact it's only twenty percent bigger than the the size of the shape. So drop shadows were one hundred percent always clipped off the end. So they looked dreadful. Um, so this week I spent the, the week fixing that problem. Um, it's a problem that we should have fixed a long time ago, but uh, you know this this is the this is the issue. So what I did was I had to re-engineer the way the filters were were telling uh, Inkscape how big that box should be. Yes. Yeah, okay. And then, yeah. All right. So, uh, that's not right. Yeah, nope. There! Ah, what happened there? That's just gone. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, that looks a bit right. Uh, no. Nope. Nope, that's gone. Okay, yeah. Yay! All working. Um, and it involved in, in implementing new features, essentially, to, 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 to keep track of things and to calculate the bounding box correctly, depending on whether you're doing a blur or whether you're doing a, a, a like a, a shadow, for, for instance. And the reason is, is because each of the filter primitives links into the next one. So each filter primitive has to modify the size of the box as it thinks it should be. Um, and that way, the, it doesn't matter who, like how the person changes the filter primitives, like what settings they use. The box should always attempt to be the right size so that things can be painted inside of that and not clip off the end. Um, that was a success. So it looks like we'll have that feature in. And, and weirdly, fixing this bug is a feature. It's a strange situation. Um, so that looks good. 
Um, the second is uh, the thing that I asked you to, that, that I uh, said I was going to do last week, which is the uh, new onboarding slash welcoming screen for Inkscape. Um, so this is this is interesting because uh, I wanted to. It has to look nice and it has to be presented in a reasonable way. We have some really good user experience designs, uh, and I wanted to incorporate all, all of those options. Um, so it meant building up a, a GTK interface using a program called G GTK Builder. And if you've never used, like, if you think the Inkscape interface is bad, the GTK Builder interface for creating interfaces is very difficult to use. Um, I don't think that the developers who made GTK Builder uh, are at fault. It's a very difficult problem to solve. Um, but it does make it very, very hard to do the kinds of like beautiful things that you might want to do. A good example is there's no CSS integration. So you can't modify the colors of things or uh, the, the, the sizes of things. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of restrictions. Uh, but I managed to do it. I managed to do uh, fade in and fade out animations on the on the graphics. I managed to change the, the, the um, colors of buttons and things. Um, I managed to uh, make it so that um, each of the little little selections looks the way that the designers are showing me in, in the in the mockups that they po posted to the issue tra tracker. Um, and now that I have this Glade file, it's basically an XML file that describes where all the, the widgets should be. Um, I can. The next step is to is to bring that into Inkscape itself and start implementing all of the fun functionality that this interface uh, encapsulates. Um, you can have a look at the interface and see what you think about the three the three steps. The last step is the only one that appears every time every single time you open Inkscape. Uh, the first two steps are the ones that happen when you first la launch Inkscape for the first time. Um, I mean that's pretty much it for this week. It's been a bit a bit of a, um, a focus on on, on these uh, bigger problems, um, but. Like always, uh, please uh, subscribe. Let me know what your issues are. Uh, let me know how you're using Inkscape. I'm always interested to, to see uh, new ways of using Inkscape and new struggles that happen when people try to use it in different ways. Um, and thank you very much for, for, for watching, and I'll see you next week.